All right. Hello, folks. We are at the hour mark, and we do want to make sure that we are timely and stay on schedule because we have such great content coming at you today. Welcome to the Teach with Chrome event series. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Jennifer Brown. I am the Google for Education Program Manager for the West Region. I am so excited to be here kicking off today's session with Roseville Joint Union High School District. So before we hear from today's guest speaker, Tony, I just want to give a brief introduction to who we are and what we do here at Google for Education. So when you think of Google, most likely you're going to think of search. And that makes sense because at Google, it all started with search 20 years ago and the ability to access information. In fact, our very mission statement is to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. So learning makes information useful, which is why it sits across everything that we do. We are helping everyone in the world learn anything in the world, whether it's learning for school, learning for work, or just learning for life. Now, it's our driving goal at Google for Education to really help educators transform their teaching and learning for everybody. And that means giving them a platform for every school to have the time, the tools, the materials that they need to create impactful teaching and learning environments that are right for every individual student. This slide is showing you some ways that we do that. We've got Chromebooks. You're going to hear more about those today. They are a revolutionary hardware and operating system that helps teachers deliver instructional impact while at the same time significantly reducing fleet cost and complexity for IT departments. Then we've got Google Workspace. That includes things like Google Classroom, Docs, Drive, Gmail. It brings Chromebooks to life and it allows district leaders, educators, and students unlock limitless resources that comes with access to the internet. Then we have education first programs and we're helping districts adopt and get the most of Google for education like computer science or CS first for middle school students to learn how to code and the Google Teacher Center that ensures all educators have access to quality training for our solutions. And in 2022, we have more options across our products than ever before whether it's always connected Chromebooks that have LTE built in or our four new editions of Workspace, we are giving you more choice than ever before. So with Google Workspace for Education, that's our popular platform for collaborating, communicating. It now comes in four editions. You've got your free version that anyone can use. There's Google Workspace for Education Standard, Teaching and Learning Upgrade, and Education Plus. We also have more choice in Chromebooks across a range of manufacturers like Acer, Asus, Dell, HP, Lenovo, Samsung. There is more choice in Chromebooks than ever before. And some of the new devices feature built-in LTE for always-on connectivity, or others are featuring the lightning-fast Wi-Fi 6. And finally, the Chrome Education Upgrade really unlocks the full capabilities of ROS, freeing up IT resources, giving teachers more time to focus on learning outcomes, all without compromising security. Now, Chromebooks, that is what we're going to hear from Tony and kind of the journey that his district has taken. They are super fast, super secure, super reliable devices, and they give teachers and students access to the world's information, and we make it easy for IT to deploy and manage them. They're powered by Chrome OS, which is a cloud-first operating system that defends against ransomware by default. Um, fun little note, there have never been reported ransomware attacks ever on any business, education, or consumer Chrome OS device. We have 50 plus million students and teachers who are using Chromebooks worldwide to create, collaborate, communicate, and Chromebooks were actually named the top device in K-12 education in 2021. 
Now, the Chrome Education Upgrade is what really unlocks Chromebooks for districts. Admins can manage over 500 settings. It ensures security, stability, and it helps to personalize the learning environment for students and educators. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we have four editions of our beloved Google Workspace platform. On the far right, you see our free version, which is known as Google Workspace for Education Fundamentals. This platform brings your school community together with really a free suite of tools that enable better communication and collaboration. Now, moving to the left of this slide, with Education Standard, you can really level up with advanced security and analytics and controls to safeguarding against evolving digital threats. Then we've got the Teaching and Learning Upgrade, which allows districts to enhance instructional impact with advanced video communication, enriched class experiences, and tools that really drive academic integrity. And then finally, Education Plus, that is the one that transforms your school because it's a comprehensive solution that incorporates both advanced security and analytics and enhanced teaching and learning tools and more. Now, Google Classroom, I'll just tell you a little shout out. I'm a former teacher. This one, I lived in classroom when I was teaching. It is mission control for teaching and learning. It provides one centralized place for teaching and learning where educators and students can collaborate and learn more effectively. And Classroom works right within Google Workspace. It's simple to use, brings all your learning tools together where they can be accessed from any device. It saves your teachers time enriches student learning experiences, and it provides visibility, insight, and control. The easy-to-use features in Classroom, they can be learned in minutes, and it helps teachers manage their instruction and grade efficiently and transparently, all while tailoring student experiences with helpful and personalized learning features. Now, if you're wondering why Google for Education, let me wrap it up here with a bow for you guys. We are dedicated to helping all students and educators reach their full potential. We have grown to over 170 million education users. That includes students, teachers, and education leaders. Over 150 million of those users are working in Google Classroom every day, and our Chromebooks are the top device in K-12 education with over 50 million million global education users. Wow. With that, I am so excited to pass this off to the star of the hour, Tony Ham, who's Director of Technology Services at Roseville Joint Union High School District. Tony, we are so excited to have you here with us. I'm going to pass it over to you. That way we can hear all about your story. Thanks, Jennifer. That was the first time I've ever been referred to as the star of the hour. So that's that's pretty amazing. <laughs> that's 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 great. First and foremost, um, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, just so everybody knows, the Google team has been amazing. Uh, I've been an early adopter for quite some time and been pretty excited to get on here and, and, and chat with everybody. So thank you. Hey, everybody. Um, first off, welcome. And uh, I'm I'm pretty excited to be able to share kind of our story and our journey. Um, a little bit about me, and I want to I want to lay the foundation about us a little bit. Uh, I've been the director of technology here for Roseville for about eight years now. I joined uh, this organization in 2013. It's been an amazing journey. And before we really get into our kind of career preparedness and success, I really do want to um, tell you where we've been and how we got to where we are, and then maybe give some insight of, on on where we feel things are going to be going in the future. Now. Our journey begins with something that we call our digital equity project. Now, we we quickly realized, real quick before we jump into that, sorry. Um, yeah, hey, side note, slide decks usually aren't my jam, and so uh, I should have warned Google of that. But uh, we're gonna we're gonna do our best. Um, so about us, we're a high school only district. We have about six hundred teachers, about ten thousand seven hundred students, five hundred and fifteen learning areas, two counties, and believe it or not, three police municipalities throughout our district. And I feel it's important to really jump into this and, and kind of give you an understanding of our district because what I found in working in education, as many of you know, is that 
Uh, no two school districts are exactly the same. You know, a lot of them rhyme, but they're they're not going to be the same entity. And even within a school district, you're going to have several schools that, again, they're going to have a bit different needs. So if you could just take a few things from this presentation and and learn from maybe some of our experience and maybe take something back to to your world, um, that's that's really my goal here today is really just kind of learn together and and see what we can do as far as me conveying our experience with the Google the Google Workspace. So uh, why go one-to-one -one pre COVID? And I promise to the group, I'm not going to talk about COVID pretty much whatsoever, because this was, this was a goal for our organization long before that happened. So caveat, that'll be it. This will be the only slide that has those, has that word on there. Um, so essentially in 2013, we started adopting the Chrome platform with like many of you may have with a cart based environment. And that was really great to get some of that exposure into the classroom. Uh, our superintendent at the time was a super cognitive and aware that we need to really prepare our students for not only a 21st century uh, learning environment, but a 21st century career environment. And we wanted our students to graduate our organization, being prepared to function as an adult in, in this modern environment that we find ourselves in. So with that car based environment, we started seeing a growing user base. Things were going just wonderfully. Um, we could see our metrics daily on Chromebooks being used on the network and, and classrooms being created. We can see those tick up. Now, we started seeing pain points. We saw a plateau in usage. Um, things kind of hit a glass ceiling, and we had to really kind of revisit why that was. We did that by really gathering some really good analytics and most of all, listening to our teachers and what they were saying. And essentially what was happening, like, like most teachers will, is that they were experiencing that they were not able to count on a Chrome cart. And if they can't count on having the cart in their classroom, uh, by no means were they gonna adapt their curriculum uh, to, to count on that. So essentially the decision was made uh, within, within our upper management is that, okay, well, if we're gonna take the next step and we're gonna really prepare our students uh, for the 21st century skill sets that we really did have to move to a take home environment. That was the only way to eliminate the that particular pain point of staff not have, being able to count on the devices in the classroom. Now, specifically, that wasn't just, uh, that wasn't a decision we made just for um, usage statistics on their own. Our, our entire uh, vision and focus on in our organization was a digital equity platform. We recognized that although we were adapting a lot of these tools in the classroom and our teachers were adapting Google Classroom and Docs and Sheets and Drive, and that was amazing. Uh, when students went home in the day, uh, there was a growing inequity of those students who had access at home and those, uh, those students who did not have access. So inherently, what we ended up seeing, like most of you, right, it's pretty obvious now, is that that, that wasn't an environment that we really wanted to participate in. We wanted all the students to be on an equal playing field and have access to their curriculum and the content um, at all times, be it on-premise or at home. Um, so <laughs> this was probably, in a, and it's a funny note for the group, uh, this was the only time I was ever assigned a massive project amount of work um, during a keynote event. And um, it's kind of funny. So we were at, uh, I think it was our PD day two and our superintendent at the time, which we'd already been in discussions about this, about some of the logistic pieces and, and going one-to-one. -one, and he was talking about the importance of that equity piece and making sure that all students had access and, and preparing our kids for the 21st century environment. And at the end of his keynote, he announced that, oh yeah, and by the way, in six months, we're going to be going one-to-one. -one. Well, uh, essentially, I had not been told that, neither had my counterpart in Ed Services. And so we kind of looked at each other like, oh, okay, I guess this is happening. And, um, you know, I'm going to give, I'm going to give the superintendent the benefit of the doubt. I'm, I'm a busy guy and I know he's busy as well. And I think he really just kind of forgot to tell us that, by the way, the decision was made. So, um, you know, that was kind of a, a mad scramble after that point to get rolling and, and get that project moving. So, what was involved, who was involved in this process? What do most of you who maybe haven't adopted this platform need to know? Well, first and foremost, um, your staffing, right? Your resources. I like to say that resources are a lot like nutrition. You know, you eat good food, you're gonna get you're gonna get a good result. If you provide the proper resources to a project, you're gonna get you're gonna get uh, those results back to you. Um, if you stretch your organization too thin, it's gonna, there's gonna be pain points that are gonna become evident. And so staffing was something that we really had to look at. And, and like most of you, we had resource constraints. We couldn't provide all of the staffing that we wanted to, to make sure that every aspect 
of this particular scenario was 100% successful, um, but we did our very best. You know, working in public education, that's what you that's what you have to do most of the time. And you sometimes you have to make those compromises. So staffing, uh, district tech team, we have an amazing group of people that's a, comprised of uh, teachers, administrators, IT folks. Um, from every aspect of organization and we get together monthly to discuss issues and and um, direction you know every once in a while i have to play my director's card if we're going to pull something that's maybe not sustainable but i really don't do that very often uh, this is a collaborative approach just like how we want our students to act in a collaborative nature we we do the same thing um and it's just and as well the uh, administration 100 percent on board so that's also key, right? See, being able to see the vision and the need, that equity piece, was something that was that made our our jobs much much easier. Um, the board has been amazing in our in our organization. I could say that in eight years, I've never been denied a purchase by our board once, uh, not even had a delayed purchase. So, seeing the need for those skill sets and that equipment and everything that's necessary for our classrooms and our teachers to be successful um, is something that is also exceptionally important. Um, and for those of you who may be, you may be on the ed, ed tech side of the house or maybe on the technology side of the house, um, building that regional that regional group, that cohort where you can you can lean on some folks, um, you know, build that relationship with some of the surrounding districts, take folks out to lunch. You know, it's, it's one of those things where, especially in a position that I'm in, um, you know, there's not many people to talk to about certain scenarios. So uh, being able to know your regional directors or CTOs or, or ed services folks, it's, it's super important. And every once in a while, it gives you that ability to ping those ideas off of them and, and kind of see where they're at and really adopting a platform of this nature. Now, this is, a, this is an interesting concept, and this is why I really love Chromebooks and I love Chrome OS because we wanna teach skills and not tools, essentially, right? Um, with the adapting nature of technology, um, these tools are gonna to be changing and they're gonna be changing all of the time. But what won't change is the, the, the student's skill sets to be able to utilize technology in a specific manner. And we think that, you know, obviously these are the kind of the big four that most of us are familiar with, right? Communication, collaboration, critical thinking, digital literacy. Well, what does that really mean? And I'm gonna give you an amazing example that was super serendipitous that happened to me two days ago. Uh, we have this amazing student newspaper at one of our high schools. It's Roseville High School. It's called Eye of the Tiger. Feel free to look it up. And uh, we are rolling out a new math product. It was called IXL Math. I'm sure some of you are familiar with it. Now, um, this particular student wanted more information on that. Why was it being rolled out? Where, where did this initiative come from? Who's, who's in charge of it? Now, she took the initiative, did looked at our department directory, not just department, but the district directory, identified me as being maybe a good place to start. She reached out with an email, being super cognitive of my schedule. We traded a few emails. She then went ahead and once we were able to nail down a meeting time, sent me a Google Calendar invitation uh, for that meeting time with a time and a location. I seriously gave myself like a big old high five just because like how amazing is it to see our students behaving like how we'd want our staff to behave. Um, and this is, I believe she was a sophomore. So just having that context and watching somebody behave like a full, a full fledged adult, uh, in a high school program was, was pretty amazing. Cause I mean, like most of us, we have some coworkers that sometimes don't, don't actually use a calendar, um, as they should, or, or an email in a, in a productive manner. <laughs> so, um, it, it was, it was one of those things that reinforced the student is actually using these 21st century skills and they're doing so because of the tools that we gave them and, and they are adapting to it. So um, and on that note, I have, I have one more anecdote, which, which I just love to give as most of you can, can imagine. Now I can say right off of the bat, a lot of the Mac users in the house are gonna hate me for this, but, um, and I love Mac, just to be clear, just to be clear. Um, so when I came into the district, we had an interesting, uh, we had an interesting conundrum to solve. Uh, we had a few Mac labs that were in premise that we were looking at that needing to be replaced. Um, those labs were put in place because they were running a program called Final Cut. Now, Final Cut at the time was an industry standard application. It was used for video editing all over. Um, however, since that time, Adobe Premiere had kind of stolen its lunch to some extent. So we were really doing an, a cost analysis of do we replace these with like Windows class workstations? Do we do Macs? Like, what do we do? Um, so we kind of went down the rabbit hole of saying, well, we're not quite sure here, but we don't want to make the decision based on hardware. Well, Luckily enough, some of the leadership that we had in the district at the time had connections to um, some, some, we'll call them Hollywood folks, right? TV producers for some legitimate organizations. We reached out and said, hey, what do we do? Like, here's the, here's the fork in the road that we're at. Um, and we got back a answer that we really didn't expect to have. 
And that answer was, we really don't care what you teach them on. Don't teach the kid Final Cut. Don't teach them Premiere. Teach your students how to tell a story. Teach them, teach them how to tell uh, something that's going to be interesting. We'll teach the skill set later, or we'll teach the tool later. Teach them how to do that critical thinking. And that was something that's really kind of, you know, obviously sparked that aha moment. And we kind of ran with that. And it's been kind of a premise in organization uh, ever since. Now, where does that leave us? Where does that leave our digital ecosystem after we went one-to-one? -one? Well, essentially, we had a take-home device for every student. Those students were issued a device upon coming into our organization, and that device is theirs for the entirety of their career with us. We don't get that device back until they leave the district, hopefully via graduation, uh, but if they transfer out, um, same, same difference there. Um, also, we built out our libraries as technology hubs. So I can, the caveat is, I don't hate books. We still have lots of books. It's just the library is a central location and it's a wonderful meeting and collaboration place for our students. So we thought that was the most applicable place to make that our hub. And that's kind of what we did. In addition to that, we made it an affordable device insurance for our students. So these kids who obviously, um, it could be a little bit more cumbersome for, for the repairs to be in some of these third party services. We ended up becoming the insurer in the district and um, it's actually worked out quite well providing that. It's, it's simplified the repair process and essentially the district has taken on the liability uh, for all of the student devices. Now, now that everything's done, we've rolled everything out. We have this great digital ecosystem. The Chromebooks are an amazing tool. The kids are adapting to it. Usage is going up. Everything's amazing, right? Um, no, not necessarily uh, with everything, right? As as any change comes in an organization, you are going to have pain points and you, you're gonna have, um, for example, changing organizational roles. Um, this is kind of like a who moved my cheese scenario, right? So um, as 21st century skills are becoming more predominant in the classroom, um, throughout the entire organization that's being uh, adopted with, right? I had a funny combo with one of our ed service directors the other, way, the other day where he said, um, it's starting to feel like I'm a lot more like technology than I am in education? And, and the answer is, yeah, absolutely. Um, as we go more web-based platform, uh, all of our curricular tools are, are a web tool that everybody in ed services are going to have to learn these tools inside and out, front and back, so that when they're in a classroom, when they're working with a the teacher, they can put that teacher at ease and solve any issue they have. So everybody throughout the entire organization is going to have to change their role a little bit to adapt to what this environment is going to look like. Along with that, we're going to have logistical difficulties. You know, you have all of a sudden you have a mountain of uh, new tasks that weren't there before. And getting back to getting back to the resource conversation, <clears throat> if you didn't prep for those resources and you don't provide those resources for those future pain points, um, they will they will cause some stress in your organization. But that's been the beauty of the Chrome platform that we've had is the more we adapt Chrome, the more it simplifies our environment. And a lot of those resource needs and those stressors tend to go away. So it's been a really, really good um, situation for us on that front. So now that we're here, right, we've, we've built out the ecosystem. We wanna build on that Chrome Foundation. We wanna, we wanna continue the momentum. We wanna expand that functionality and we wanna increase supportability. Well, how do we do that? First off, Let's take a look at our CTE programs. All of these programs that you see on your screen, they utilize our Chrome OS platform in some manner or fashion. Biomed folks, our students, we have an amazing biomed program. Those kids take their safety, um, their safety certifications via their Chrome device in their classroom. Same thing with construction. Our kids need to get certified for construction safety and they do it with Chromebooks, food services. Uh, they, get, they get safety food certified. In addition, uh, you'll see I'm going to do a little asterisk here for our engineering, graphic design, and digital media. Um, those programs are amazing, and you could be asking me, but Tony, how are you adapting um, using some of these modern these modern tools with the Chrome OS environment? Now, I could say, getting back all the way, circling all the way back to our digital equity goal, we inherently created a digital equity problem uh, the further we adopted the platform, and essentially as you see these really amazing robust computer labs that are running kind of as we discussed before, Adobe Premiere, Autodesk, uh, engineering, right? So you have 3D animation, all of these amazing tools on premise. Now, that's amazing. We have these unbelievable teachers, they're teaching great platforms. And the problem that we that we ran into was that here is here are the platforms are running. Now, as, as 
many of you know, those inherently don't really operate on a Chromebook most of the time, asterisk, right? So what we ended up doing is saying, okay, we, we created the similar problem that we solved via the Chromebooks to begin with. All of a sudden, we have these product suites where some students can go home and they have an engineering class workstation and they can access Adobe and they can access Autodesk and they can access the curriculum that's being taught in the classroom. But they can't, but those some other students that obviously don't have that access, how do we solve that problem? Well, I have amazing news for the group. Um, we were able to solve that problem through app streaming directly to our Chromebooks. So inherently, we can deliver the full product suite of Autodesk and Adobe directly to our student Chromebooks through an app stream and a Chrome browser. What that means is our students can access these platforms from anywhere on the planet as long as they have a Chrome, a Chrome browser and they have a, a steady web connection. And I can say that this is a technology that I've been skeptical in the past, skeptical of in the past, and it's inherently becoming more and more robust and much more usable. We have an independent study program that's adopted uh, Adobe or Autodesk and Adobe as an app stream through the student Chromebooks exclusively, and they no longer have engineering workstations. Uh, the feedback so far from the teacher, and it's been for the entirety of this school year, is that it works exceptionally well and they love it. Um, and once again, using that Chrome platform, we were able to solve an inherent equity program or an, an equity problem in our curriculum um, just through a little bit of creative thinking. And I know this is an issue that a lot of folks are having out there. Uh, they, I was just at a, a tech conference in Austin, Texas, and I was sitting at a table and firstly, I, I met a lot of wonderful folks out there. And there was, there was two folks from different school districts and they were literally trying to solve this exact same problem. They said, um, they were arguing amongst themselves, uh, do we go with you know robust engineering laptops? Do we buy MacBooks? And I was listening to the conversation and inherently I kind of leaned over and said, well, you know, we're app streaming directly to a Chromebook and we have been for about a year now. Um, firstly, surprise kind of creeped in where, and a little bit of disbelief. So I reached into my bag and I pulled out my, my Ferrari red Chromebook. And there's, there's another story behind that, but I won't tell that now. And went ahead and launched a browser and launched a session of Adobe Illustrator. Um, the gentleman's eyes got really wide. The last thing I remember is he started taking pictures of my, of my screen and sending it to his network engineer with the caption of C with lots of exclamation points. So I think I inherently maybe solved solved a, uh, a bet for them or something of that nature. <laughs> but uh, he was extremely excited. And the last thing he said was, I need to get your number. So, um, you know, I said, okay, let's, let's trade contact information and uh, let's, let's get in touch. But just thinking about what that does for your IT department, let's, let's go out of the classroom briefly. Being able to support something as robust as an Adobe or an Autodesk platform through an app stream or even a virtualized version of Windows directly into an app stream, directly to a student Chromebook, unlocks all sorts of potential, equity aside. Not to mention, um, as Jen had indicated, that there's a security issue inherently in Mac and Windows. Um, well, if you, have a, if you have a patch that's needed on your Windows device, being able to update one instance on a virtual server uh, takes you maybe you know a few minutes in the morning while you're having a cup of coffee and you're not having a, all of your support staff running around like crazy trying to update your systems. So what's next? That's where we are. That's where we are now. What, are the, what does the future look like for my district? Well, I could say this. First and foremost, um, every facility that we have online and we're bringing online, they are being designed around collaboration and communication for our students. Uh, we just built a brand new high school, which, which was a long time in the making. I mean, four superintendents, three IT directors. It was a it was a long haul, but it's done now and it's beautiful. And if you get a chance, go ahead and Google West Park High School in Roseville, California. Um, hopefully you're wearing socks because they're gonna get knocked off when you see it. Um, it it's, it's really an amazing, it's an amazing thing. And just to give you kind of an understanding of, of what does that look like with collaboration, there's no, there's no real hallways in this campus. All of the classrooms open to common areas and those common areas are areas for students to go work and collaborate amongst themselves. Large format screens where they can plug into and share content. Um, and again, the entire campus is built around Chrome OS. Every student has a Chromebook and believe it or not, every staff member was issued a Chromebook. So very few uh, Windows devices or Mac devices on that campus. Um, and we can talk a little bit more about what that needs for the rest of the district going forward, but um, it's been extremely supportable. It's very mobile, it's very modern. And um, having those staff and students on the exact same platform has been an unbelievable benefit. Computer labs, as we know them today, 
um, in my mind, if I were to put on my futurist hat, are going to be going away to a big extent. What you're going to see is instead of labs of computers that you have to maintain every four and five years, um, I can tell you I just priced out a new computer lab for our engineering department this morning, and it's $99,000. Um, those will go away, and what you'll end up seeing is docking screens. We're standardizing on USB-C screens, and the, the students will walk into the room with their Chromebook. They will plug it into a USB-C screen. They'll get a large format display and keyboard, and then they will stream whatever uh, high-end application that they need to stream, and they'll be doing it on their Chromebook. And that same application is going to be available to them uh, from home directly from that student Chromebook. Um, and lastly, I want to leave I want to leave the group with with a thought here. Um, take some time and analyze your data, and be be prepared to be wrong in some instances. You know, we have we have an organization that that is okay with failure at times. And I think that um, that's important, right? F failure is success training. And so as you look at different ways to creatively implement these technologies, be okay with something being wrong. Don't, um, you, know, you know, a lot of folks will put some of their self-worth into whether or not they were right or wrong. And, and that, that inherently will, will take that realization of a, of a bad path and it will, it'll, it'll extend it and make it a little bit more painful in the long run. So we're okay with that. We're gonna look at this data. We're gonna see what's working. We're gonna put more resources towards that and we're gonna see what's not working and we're gonna move away from that. But one thing I can tell you is we'll see more and more uh, Chrome centric platforms going throughout our district. You're gonna see Windows workstations disappearing. You're gonna see uh, more of a Chrome centric environment uh, throughout our entire organization. So um, with that, that was, that was my presentation for today. And that, that's our journey and our experience. And I am open to any questions or comments uh, that the group may have for, for me for me today. Thank you so much, Tony. I love hearing about just the journey and how you really ground your narrative in not just everything that went well, but the reality of it, because we can learn so much more that way. Like you said, the organizational changes, all of that. I think that was so relevant. Um, I'm taking a peek right now. We do have one question that came in from Ryan Collins, and he's wondering if you can share information on what kind of costs are you looking at for the app streaming? That's a great question. Uh, app streaming is the way I've been equating the app streaming is it's kind of like a cell phone bill circa 2000. Um, it's kind of a pay as you go situation. Um, you know, you can really get into the weeds on, on what that looks like for you individually. But, um, you know, I think right now we're looking at a few thousand dollars a month currently. And then we really expect that to, to grow. And, and I would add that don't expect to save a lot of money with app streaming. That's not really the intent. Right, you're you're shifting resources away from replacing computer labs and some of and some of that equipment um, to a situation where the students have access to the to this technology from anywhere on the planet. So it's a trade off, right? You don't have on premise hardware, but you're also not maintaining that hardware. Your ecosystem simplified by going Chrome centric, and with that, you're going to be able to have that equitable access from students at home. That's great. Yeah. All the comments that are coming through right now are about the app streaming. Seems like it's a hot topic. Um, do you have any additional information, Tony, on how the Autodesk apps stream to the Chromebook? Yeah, absolutely. There's a few different technologies out there that do this. Um, we're using AWS app streaming services, and, and we have a kind of pay-as-you-go plan for that. But there is a few that that's not the only game in town. There are a few different services that will provide that. And what I can say is I was a big critic of, of uh, virtualization in the past. And I could say that the technology is there where it's going to be usable and people will like to use it. And that's really what it's all about, right? What's the teacher experience? What's the student experience? Because the reality is, is what's the best technology is the technology they're going to use. If it doesn't work well, they're not going to use it. You're going to be paying for something that's a total waste. And I could say that right now, that feedback, and honestly, for the group, I was ready to push this out. And again, I was ready to fail. So I, I was propon I was a huge proponent of let, let no, let's stick with the Chromebooks. Let's make these Chrome devices even more useful. Let's do Chrome docking stations. And let's, let's get the feedback from the teacher. And when I hit send on that email of how is it going, I kind of had to hold my breath a little bit, right? Because I was ready for them. I hate this. You suck. You pushed this on me. And the response I got was, it's going amazing. I love it. 
And so that was, that was a huge kind of like sigh of relief, right? Lower the shoulders felt, felt amazing. Mm, that's so great. We have a question regarding career readiness and Chromebooks. Um, this district, this question came in from Jennifer, uses Google programs. Each student also has a Chromebook. They're wondering what else can they do to help students become ready for the workplace or for college? I mean, that's, it's a wonderful question. The, the thing that I would get back to is, is, is teaching the skills and not the tools. Um, teach the students how to communicate effectively on an email professionally. Teach the students when it's, when, it's, uh, when it's more appropriate to use maybe the chat feature, right? Which is funny because I'm actually doing a training with our ed services folks tomorrow about when, it's, when one sentence emails are kind of non-productive and when to use like Google chat and Google spaces instead of that. Um, teach them when, how to communicate with an adult and set a calendar event. Just kind of like the story I told about the, uh, the I the Tiger uh, newspaper uh, student. And that right there is like, if you can do that in a modern workplace, I mean, essentially, like th those are those are soft skills that a lot of hiring managers don't want to have to teach. And they really are looking for in a candidate that they're looking to hire. Mm, that's great. You know, another thought that I had, if you're looking for something that's like ready to go out of the box, Applied Digital Skills, which is a Google program that we mm. have available for middle school, high school, college, and even adult learners. It's a video-based program that is all about teaching practical skills like building a resume with Google Docs, building an infographic with Google Drawings, or planning out a community service project with Google Sheets. It's meant to be really grounded in practical, real-world application. So if you haven't dug into that, that's one that I would highly recommend checking out. I love that. That sounds amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, one question, a little bit back to the app streaming. Do you have any information, Tony, on spec requirements for the Chromebooks that, like, what they might require for app streaming? Anything that comes to the top of your head? It's a great question. Um, you know, I didn't really get into the hardware that we use, but our student Chromebooks um, essentially are kind of your standard device, but we do insist on the four gig models on some of your student devices, and we don't go with the two gig models. Um, with Chrome, kind of the more RAM, the better. Um, I can say that we actually roll out Chrome boxes for our staff as well. And we attach a Chrome box to every um, AV system or we're going forward with to every AV system. And, um, you know, it with at the risk of voiding my warranty in those things, we actually crack them open and add more memory to them just to be able to to be able to have as many tabs as we want open and running. So, uh, yeah, student devices and really the more RAM you could get in your student device, the better experience you're going to have with those active tabs. Awesome. Thank you. That's great. We have a question from Andrea or Andrea um, wondering about who determines the level or upgrades a district will utilize for Google Workspace. I think the question you're asking might be from my introduction when I went through the different editions and talked about how there are different levels or upgrades that you can have. Typically, that's something that hopefully will be decided between educational services and IT in tandem. So that way they can think what are the benefits for a different workspace edition for IT, but also how is it going to impact teaching and learning? So I would recommend if you are going to have a conversation on looking at like a paid edition, I would include both sides of the house because it can impact um, both of them. Ashley has a question for you, Tony. Can you talk more about the in-house insurance for Chromebooks? Um, I mean, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, just like many of like the third party insurances that that you could uh, point your your folks to, we inherently just kind of developed our own. And it's totally elected behavior. And essentially, if a student pays, I believe we have like $25, maybe $30, they get full coverage for their Chromebooks, repairs, lost or damaged, all that good stuff. And we do it in house. So the process is completely expedited. And we house all of their insurance information or as far as like their enrollment in our SIS. So it makes billing and repair super easy and it just kind of streamlines the whole process because our end goal is to make sure that as we develop our entire curriculum that's based around the Chrome platform and the students having their Chromebook in the classroom, that we have to have that student have that Chromebook as, you know, as quickly as they, as we can get it to them. Awesome. That's great. All right, let's see. Feel free to leave a comment, folks. If you are following us live right now, Tony and I are happy to answer your questions. 
Um, we got one that came in from Luke. Do you have educators who still need the better hardware for teaching or have you or do you see app streaming replacing all hardware? I mean, that's a great question. If you're to put kind of your futurist hat on, right? I would say that at some point, app streaming can replace all hardware. Right now, if I'm you know, to be totally transparent, our CTE teachers still kind of get kind of upgraded hardware, but all of our other teaching staff are issued uh, staff Chromebooks, and we we buy na nice staff Chromebooks. Right to be clear, I I don't ask anybody to do anything I I wouldn't do. Right now, I'm streaming from a Chromebook. Uh, I work at a Chromebook 99% of the time. The only time I now pull out my laptop for anything is to like approve financials in our financial system that's still kind of antiquated. So um, I love it. And again, I'm adapting myself to it. I use Google Sheets like all the time. Um, I actually require Google Sheets training for my staff just because I find it helps them in project management and some of their planning. And I can see kind of an inherent benefit in that. And no, I mean, it's it's absolutely amazing. The new the new tool sets that are coming out there with, with the Chrome platform and Chrome OS are absolutely amazing. We have, like I said, our newest, most modern high school, all of our teachers, except for two, have um, Lenovo Chromebooks with built-in styluses and we have Chromecasts in the classroom and they can stream wirelessly and they can present and use as a digital whiteboard and upload to the Google Classroom. It's really amazing. That's great. Oh, I love hearing about that. Karen's wondering about, you know, what model of Chromebook to recommend for teachers. Karen, there is something um, I highly recommend you check into. If you Google Chromebook discovery page, um, it's going to take you to a splash page where you're able to sort and look up like very specifics about Chromebooks. One thing that we hear a lot for teacher devices, we're looking at about eight gigs of RAM for the processor. You're thinking like an Intel i5 or i7 or an AMD riser. Um, they're coming with garage styluses, fingerprint ID, um, front camera, rear facing camera, touch screen, convertible. Um, there are some really high powered advanced use devices that we recommend for teachers. Um, I would ask Tony, like what specifically is, is happening at Roseville? So um, I actually, get, we ended up, it's a great question because it's a difficult, there's a lot of great products out there and nobody wants to choose wrong, especially when you're doing like a teacher rollout, right? You're buying 500 devices. And if there's something that, that they don't love about them, right? It's inherently going to kind of come back to you a little bit. So what we did was we ended up forming a subcommittee of teachers and we bought demo devices and we let them use each device and kind of cycled them out and then got their feedback from each one. Um, and we also kind of, we set our expectations on each area. So one, one area we set the highest priority on was tabs. So one of the biggest feedback we received from our last gen of Chromebooks is we would have like a, say a substitute teacher, they would have 32 tabs open. And then they would say, well, my Chromebook's starting to run slow. And it's like, well, you're running GoGuardian, you're running Gmail, Calendar, you're running all these things. So we quickly realized for a teacher, four gigs of RAM probably wasn't enough. So whichever model you go with, I would definitely recommend a minimum of eight gigs for a teacher. That's great. Some people are kind of sharing about their own personal um, stories, like Jennifer personally uses a Pixel book for personal use and a Google Pixel yeah. phone. So love that. Awesome. That's great, Jennifer. Yeah, feel Pixel free. Pixel is great. Oh, yeah. Love the Pixel book. I'm on a Chromebook myself now, too, streaming. I mean, I use it day in, day out. It serves me well. Um. Yeah, feel free, guys. We have a couple minutes left. If you have a question for Tony or for myself or both of us, um, we'll give you just another minute to throw those in. Tony, when I was listening to you speak, one thing that I loved hearing was your focus on the actual skills rather than necessarily like the tools themselves. And I think that's just so powerful because things are changing so quickly. New tools are being introduced to the marketplace. Um, for example, when I think about graphic design software, Adobe used to be kind of like the, the big, you know, yeah. incumbent in the room, but now you have ones like Figma, Yep. Figma is one that's coming up that folks are using on Chromebooks. I mean, it just changes so quickly. So if Figma's you're focused awesome. on, right? I yeah. I've been learning so much, and I'm like, if you're focusing on the skills, I mean, then you're really preparing students, no matter what tool comes out. Oh, absolutely. And I think your biggest bottleneck in that area is going to be like adapting the curriculum. You have you have teachers, and and it's amazing, and I totally appreciate that they're busy. 
they've adapted this curriculum that they've been using. So, right. So when you throw a new tool at them, you really have to be there to like do the soft handoff and make sure they're comfortable and, and help them as much as you can. Cause they, they're not going to want to just kind of throw everything into the, in the waste receptacle and start over. But tools, tools like we mentioned is they're amazing. And anything you could go that's actually um, Chrome platform centric instead of like, we use app streaming because it's a necessity for us. But if I could like scrap everything off the table and start over, right. I'm going to pick tools that work inherently in the Chromebook because it's going to work better for the students. Right. So we're going to meet the teachers where they're at, at times, but then there's other times we're going to say, no, this is going to be the, the right choice to go. And it's going to be a better experience for our students. Yeah. That's so great. Well, hey, Tony, I just want to take a minute while we wrap up here to thank you for coming and sharing your story. We just so greatly appreciate hearing the narrative of what's happening in your district. You guys are doing amazing things. So thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Have a great day, everybody.